Welcome to The Mighty Dragon. I caught up recently with Deborah Richards, a guest who was on The Mighty Dragon about a year ago, and Deborah was in the post-production phase of her first feature film, Move Me No Mountain. Since then, it's been released on Amazon Prime and doing phenomenally well. It was great to catch up to see how it's all going and what her future plans are. Hello, Debbie. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me back again. A year later, and so much has happened. (laughs) So many more grey hairs and wrinkles later. Oh my gosh, it's not just me then. <laughs> oh, it's oh, all of us. Great. Congratulations. Your first feature film, Move Me No Mountain, has been released on Amazon Prime. How does it feel now to be at the end of the line? Amazing. It feels amazing. It's 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 such a strange process because I feel like my relationship with the movie is unique. And so I go through this roller coaster. Um, of, 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 you know, some days being really proud of it and some days crying in a fetal position, wondering what the hell I've done and, and like all the way through making it, you know, and then, and now it's out. I, I think I've seen it like 84 times <laughs> and, 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 and now I can finally, it was only in those last four viewings really that I could finally see it as a film and not as a Flickr book collection of experiences that it took to make each shot. Wow. I saw it the um, the other week and I honestly thought it was incredible. I was really? so absorbed in it and honestly, it was terrific. Really well done. Um, when we last spoke, you were curious as to the reaction as to the many aspects of Vegas you get to see from the strip to the desert and to the tunnels underneath. Has this been quite revealing to the audience about the hidden life underneath the city? Well, 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 I mean, I think you're better fit to answer that. What did you think of, of seeing Vegas in a, in a, a totally different... Because you never see Vegas like that in a movie, right? You've never known. Yes. So what, what what did you think of seeing those different sides of it? I, I found it in Vegas, um, watching it, seeing how much wealth there is there and how much poverty is even more highlighted, I think, in somewhere like Vegas. And even more shocking... Truly shocking. Truly shocking, yeah. That, and that's, Absolutely. That's what inspired me to make the movie is the dichotomy between the haves and the have-nots in the city. It's it's so starkly contrasting by by such short distances. Like you have the multi-billion dollar casinos and you step outside and your feet are like six feet above the tunnels where people are living. So it's yeah. very, it's very shocking. So uh, I'm I'm really glad that we got to show so much of the city because, like I said, in movies traditionally about Vegas, you only ever see inside the casinos. And um, I think it's so much more interesting to see the other side that's never been shown in film. And I think there's so much, um, you, you know, we, we show a lot of um, ugly sides of Vegas, but I think there's so much beauty in decay. Yeah. That even the ugly can, can be framed and shown beautifully. And that's what I tried to do to capture that dichotomy. Honestly, it was wonderful, really wonderful. I, I felt like when, while I was watching it, I just couldn't even blink because I, it was at the pacing that I enjoy as well. It didn't feel like the story was stuck anywhere or, you know, it was just really well paced and really well acted. I, I truly enjoyed it. And just always thinking as well about how you just do not know the story of that person on the street. Every one of those people started life off somehow, you know, and what happened to them? It just brought it all home to me watching that. I'm so glad it had an impact. One of the big goals of making the movie was to uh, educate audiences about the realities of homelessness in modern urban America. Yes, absolutely. Um, So um, I'm really glad that I got to shine a light on that because... um, you know, we're all guilty of, of of sometimes turning a blind eye, I think, to yes. those less fortunate than ourselves. Um, and you know, anything that can that can, you know, maybe shine a light to use the pun, because that's one of the the, the organizations that help just do research, but anything I can do to shine a light on, on on something that important. Uh I'm, I'm I'm really proud of the movie for doing that, really proud of the movie for being original. And I'm really proud of the movie for for having a distinctive voice because I think um, I I think it was a really good statement. It's the first film to say, look, here here I am. I'm a 
Uh, this isn't my last movie, and um, whether you like it or not, you can definitely, I think, you can definitely see a distinctive voice in yes. seeing a filmmaker to watch. Yeah, absolutely. When we last spoke, you were wearing many hats, um, writing, directing, editing. Is that still the case for you? No, because um, I actually hired a writer. Oh. So now, um, uh, yeah, because I'm in post-production of my next movie and I'm in development of the next one. So uh, with so many things going on, uh, I decided to collaborate and hire a writer. And, and my team is growing, you know, we're, we're just starting to work with uh, a PR firm um, called Recum. And uh, we're also uh, work, I'm working with a publicist now and uh, we have a part-time social media person. So the, the team is growing. Um, right. So I don't have to do... Um, I mean, I'm still working like around the clock, like crazy, yeah. doing a million things. But it's the things I'm doing are, are changing, and um, I'm starting to do more of the things that only I can do. Right. Okay. Um, over 20 years in Vegas, are you staying put, or now for the success of Move Me No Mountain, being tempted to move to LA? Well, it's funny you say that because I, I have a plan. Um, uh, I have um, uh, have a Dark Lights poster on my wall. I have a Move Me No Mountain poster on my wall. Yeah. I got a spot for my Shaken and Stirred poster on the wall. Yeah. And I got a spot in the other room for the next movie that I'm doing. And once I've done that, I will have run out of wall space and I'll be moving. So <laughs> I've, I've decided what I'm going to do is uh, the goal is sometime in the next 10 years, hopefully sooner rather than later, is to buy four acres of dirt in Las Vegas put a 10-foot wall around it, uh, put fake grass down, put a billion trees in there, have a couple little tiny houses at one end for myself and guests, uh, have a bunch of doggies, and then have a big-ass warehouse at the other end as a film studio and a little pink golf cart to get me back and forth. That is so you. This is going to happen, isn't it? It's going to happen. It's <laughs> going to so happen. Cool. That's so, so gonna, cool. I'm going to build a movie ranch. Oh, gosh, uh, I'm so jealous. That's well, you're going to have to come and visit and stay in one of the tiny houses. Absolutely, I will do. And maybe yeah. do a podcast out of it. Yeah, yeah, that'd be good. That'd be really good. That sounds yeah. fantastic. What an achievement. I recently spoke to your lead actor, Kat Lelly, um, who played Jenna. Um, I watched. Um, it was great. Yeah. She did great. You guys were great. It was so, it, it's so interesting. It's so entertaining to uh, see other people speak about the work. I mentioned some standout moments from the film, and one of those was bit the gun scene where she she had the gun in her mouth in the car. Right. How that should film? Hard. Oh yeah. How should filmmakers work with guns? Well, first of all, I I, I feel there's there's absolutely zero reason to have a real gun on set. Yeah. That's just that's to me that's the beginning and end of of that conversation. Really, obviously, even with a toy gun. Um, the, the the gun we used to move me in a mountain was essentially a toy gun. It was a um, I, I can't remember the name no, the, the 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 name for it, but it's the process when they take a real gun and they fill in the barrel. So it can it's it's essentially a toy at that yeah. point. And the only reason we used that was for the weight. But I mean, we could have equally used something that had never fired. Mm -hmm. um, but it's absolutely everyone's responsibility who touches that to be 1,000% sure before they pass it to the next person. Yes. And, and, and it's it's ever, even, even down to the actor, you know, like I personally, I was the last person to touch that toy gun before handing it to Kat, and I checked it, and as soon as I handed it to Kat, I said, check, double check and triple check, and let me yeah. know when you were satisfied. But there's no reason for a, a, a firing weapon to be on set. It's just in this day of, of CGI and, Actors yeah. acting, yes, and um, special effects. There's just zero reason, so I just don't understand yeah. how these accidents happen. I mean, it, you know, touch wood, it could never happen on my set because we just have a policy of that. I mean, I don't even let cell phones on set. Yeah. <laughs> 
to yeah. 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 I, I thought I would ask this. I, I've asked a few other uh, filmmakers this too about how they handle guns on set, and I'm just reminded of the death of Brandon Lee. The anniversary just came round. So it's quite a pertinent question at the moment. Pat mentioned the extremes of heat when you filmed from the hot to the cold, and you could visibly see that heat coming off of the the highway. Did this affect the order in which you shot the film? Oh, yeah, very much so. Yeah, yeah, it was very difficult. Um, a lot of people don't realise that Vegas has extreme temperatures. In the, in the winter, it's freezing at night, and sometimes even snows here, and in the day, it's very hot. And yeah. that's what makes it what, what that's what makes it the high desert because nothing can grow here because it's you know everything is just shocked, including the residents and me. Yeah. Um, so it it was tough, you know. We had um, we couldn't film in the dead of summer because even though I'm a desert rat and I have no problem playing wiffle ball all day long in 120 degree weather, yeah. <laughs> we, we 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 realized the people we were flying in uh, were not used to this. Um, and also we were working with children who, even though they were used to the weather, um, we, you know, there's only so long you can have a kid in a, in a parked car in yeah. 120 degree heat. Yeah. And, um, and, and then not to mention that when we did some tests in the summer, some of the equipment was firing out, like the camera was fine, but the monitors were burning out. Right. So we were like, well, we have to wait till it's cool enough. But then the problem became there were two shots. Uh, there were a couple of um, wet scenes in the movie where we used two different swimming pools. And uh, the, the shot where she kind of essentially belly flops into the yeah. pool, that pool was 18 foot deep. <gasps> okay, she, That was a 10 foot belly flop by the stunt woman into an 18 foot deep pool. Now that 18 foot deep pool is only swimmable in the dead of summer because it's so deep that it's so hard to heat. Wow. So, um, so, and and also, you know, obviously with winter here, that that becomes you know like ice. So we had we had a Goldilocks zone of we have to shoot it before the water is too cold, but we can't shoot it when it's too hot. So there was really um, a small window in 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 the fall. In yeah. The I'm so American now, I call it. Yes, the fall. I was going to say it's the fall. Yeah, 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 in the autumn <laughs> or great. in the spring. Um, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes I'll hear a, a British word, like my sister will say something to me on the phone, and it'll be a word <laughs> that I haven't heard in forever. And it was, it was <laughs> she mentioned the Wick Gift Centre in Croydon. And I was like, I haven't heard the Wick Gift Centre in 20 years. Like, Is it still there? Um, yeah. So. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, yeah. And, the, and the, so those were the Goldilocks zones of when we could shoot the movie. And yeah. unfortunately, and, and so so it was when we shot it, it was like hot in the day and cold at night and, and really cold at night. Like the people yeah. that we flew in, I think they were shocked because they were all expecting it to be hot all the time. It's so crazy about Vegas, isn't it? That you yeah, just wouldn't yeah. believe it. But I which, have which been, makes it but... even harsher for the people living here yeah. in the streets. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and oh. it's the reason they go in the tunnels in the summer because it's so hot. Yeah. And but but in the winter, the the, the freezing, it doesn't, it doesn't the tunnels don't offer much respite. So it's a very abrasive city to live like on the streets. Yeah, gosh. Move Me No Mountain has raised awareness of the plight of the homeless people and the work of the Las Vegas Rescue Mission. For your future work, will you continue with this altruistic theme? Don't think about it. I'm, I'm not a very altruistic person, you, you, you know. I mean, uh, I'm I'm glad I've done this, but it's not it's not my drive. And here's the weird thing, okay? So Stanley Kubrick said, "Your films choose you. You don't choose your films." Right. And right now, I'm planning my third film, and I can completely attest to the fact that he's 100 percent right. Your you, your movies choose you. I was going to do a horror film, and at the eleventh hour, I woke up one morning with these ideas for movement of mountain. And it was all because I live in a penthouse and I look out the window and I live in a beautiful building in a bad, in a, in a not great part of town, like on the strip. And I look out my window and even though I'm in a beautiful building, I look out the window and I see homeless people out the window. So, yeah. so for me, the dichotomy was shocking and it influenced me and I chose that. Yeah. While we were in post-production of that, um, I got interviewed by some friends for a podcast who are, bartenders 
and they want to talk to me about my old life 15 plus years ago yeah as, as a world champion bartender yeah. and we got talking and we said hey we should do a documentary about bartending and so that film just fell in my lap right and then um because and and then as last time I spoke to you I think I was telling you about, um, I was planning to do a film called My Own Private Nazi Next. Yes. And that was going to be my third film. And we were planning to do that when out of a sudden, out of nowhere, I mentioned an idea to my manager about an idea I had years and years ago. And he, he got so excited about it and said, I'll find you the money for that. Make that next. And we suddenly did a complete 360. And I can give you a bit of a scoop here yeah. and tell you that my next movie is a horror that we're shooting yeah. in March next year. And it'll come out in Halloween time next year. And it's called Scissor Mouth. Wow. Scissor Mouth. Brilliant. And that's all I can tell you about. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> horror is my favorite genre. It's very exciting. We're doing um, we're doing a lot of work right now to uh, to to. You, you know, uh, we're in full swing of, yes. of putting it together. And, and of course, we're in post-production of Shaken and Stirred, the documentary yeah. about Flair Bartending, and that comes out this time next year. Um, but it's, it's incredible that while we're in post-production of Movie No Mountain, we literally shot another movie. Yeah. That was wild. Incredible. And so now I'm on my third movie in three years, and I'm literally juggling three movies right now, juggling the promotion and publicity of Movie to Mountain, yeah. um, post-production of Shaking and Stirred, and we're in development of Scissor Mouth. So yes. it's very exciting. Um, That's wonderful. And, yeah, and the team has grown so much. Like, yeah. you know, a year ago it was just my producer, and now it's my producer, my manager, uh, Zachary, my manager, my amazing assistant, AJ Dean, who is oh, yes, it all together. Yeah. And so we have a social media person. I've got my lawyer, Mitra, and publicist now, uh, Michael, and, and, and so on. And, and this has all happened in two years. Like two years ago, I hadn't even made a feature film yet. And, and here we are the other side, and I'm working on my third. And it was literally almost like two years to the month since they came up with the idea of now. Your empire has expanded. It's crazy. So um, what was the question? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've kind of mashed two questions into one there. I was Excellent. going to ask you, that: what were there any learning lessons from Move Me No Mountain that you will take into your future projects? Oh, my gosh. Um, only like a million. <laughs> um, like every stage there are lessons and, and things that get um, moved over from one project to the next. I mean, there are really simple things like uh, say if we do like uh, some kind of contract or deal memo for something specific on one movie. Well, once we figure out that, we can use that same one again for the next movie, the next movie. Right. So the simple practical things like that, a list of, um, of, of of media connections like yourself each each time around gets bigger and bigger. Yeah. Uh, lessons, um, there, there's so many lessons, technical lessons. Uh, here, here's a good one. Uh, you want a technical lesson for the filmmakers out there? Yes. Okay, here's a good tip. Um, don't sweat the wide shots because on your master shots, you only really need to sweat the beginning and the end. So if you do a wide master shot and the performance is a bit weird in the middle, don't sweat it because you're going to cut in anyway for the close-ups in the scene. Uh -huh. So on your master wide shots, don't don't sweat it. Uh, just sweat the, the head and tail. Ah, uh -huh. right. That's a great tip. Yeah. Yes. And that's kind of, and, and I knew that going in, but somehow I still managed to um, sweat <laughs> the wines. Yeah. My last question is actually going to touch on your perfectionism here and how busy you are. Do you ever get time to chill out? And what do you do? I don't. I don't. I um people tell me that I need something else. You, it's so funny. Like my friends say you need a hobby, you need to do something else. So <laughs> yeah, so I bought some Lego. And, um, but then I started uh, recreating scenes from movies. <laughs> um, I, I was building the alien uh, loader from, you know, the, the, yeah, the, yeah. the loader from Alien. Yeah, cool. And I was having a lot of fun with that. And I showed my friends, they're like, no, Debbie, no. So, um, not really. I mean, I wake up really early, like 5, 5.30 a.m. And uh, I do film. I'm now a full-time feature filmmaker. 
but I, I still direct TV commercials. I'm directing six national TV commercials this weekend. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so like today's typical day. Um, woke up at like 5.30 or so, moderated on Clubhouse for a couple hours, uh, watched a few tutorials, walked the dog, answered the emails, yeah. doing an interview, then I got a producer meeting, then I got another producer meeting, I got to read some scripts, and then I got to do some editing. That is today. So yeah. that's, 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 that's a typical day. I don't, I don't do anything else other than film. I think the only thing I do to chill, honestly, is like around 8 p.m., I go into the lounge, I crash out on the couch, I watch TV or movies, and I fall asleep on the couch watching stuff. Um, um, and people say, well, you know, what 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 do you do for fun? And I'm like, this is fun. My career yeah. is fun. My career yeah. is fun. No two days are alike. I'm always having to learn new things and, and meet new people and work with new, amazing, talented people and yeah. uh, go places I wouldn't have otherwise gone. And yeah. um, it's exciting. Oh, Debbie, it's always such a pleasure to have you on here. And honestly, I'm in such admiration of your career and everything that you've achieved in such a short time. Although I guess for you, it feels a lot longer, doesn't it? Well, it's been 15 years. So it's yeah. like a 15-year overnight success, you know? So, <laughs> uh, you know, and I feel I'm only now at the starting line. I mean, yes. now I'm a bona fide feature film director. Let's see what I do with the next 10 movies. Yeah. And, and, and then we can talk about, you know, did I do good or not? But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been, a, it's been a long journey to get here. But my career path has not been like a rocket, right? It's been like, you know, step by step by step by step. And at the time, it always felt, um, it, no, let me find that. At the time, at times, it felt unfair or, or, or not happening quick enough. Yeah. But in retrospect, I'm so proud of my 15 years of step by step by step by step. Yeah. Because at every single step, I've won fans, um, respect of my peers. I've built my reputation, I've learned my craft. And so now people are like, wow, it's happened so quick. And, and it's like, not really, but I'm I'm, I'm glad you feel that way. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, 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 it's just, it feels like it's been built on a solid uh, trajectory and I've earned it. I've earned yeah. my seat at the table. I've earned the right to make films and to drive the bus. And I'm yeah. very, very excited for you to see what I do. Best of luck with everything you're doing and sending hugs to little Cookie too. Yeah, and, 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 and well. come to Vegas and help me pick out a plot for your tiny house. Oh my God, yeah, totally. I love Vegas. I've been once and I, I loved it. It was completely crazy. So you yes. got, yeah, yeah, they say, they say it's a sh- uh, sunny place for shady people. Oh, <laughs> that's me. That's me then. That's fine. <laughs> I'll be at home. <laughs> well, thank you so much for uh, this opportunity. And hi to all your listeners and readers and followers. And, and click and subscribe and do all the good things and support this show because I think you're doing a great thing. Oh, thank you, Debbie. All the best with Move Me No Mountain. And we can see that on Prime. Thank awesome. you. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank you. Bye. bye.